Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at a couple different ways that we can group our data in Excel. Let's take a look. The first method we're gonna take a look at for grouping our data is using the legacy subtotals tool. So this has a few drawbacks. So first, you're going to need to sort the field that you want to group. So in this case, we're gonna try grouping our category field. Another drawback is that you can only group one field at a time, and you can also only apply one type of aggregation to your numerical fields. So let's try grouping our category fields. So we're gonna sort this. So we can click on the sort and filter toggles here and sort them from A to Z, or if you just select any cell in your data set and go up to the data tab, you have sort options there and you can sort your category field there. Now that we've got that field sorted, we can add subtotals to it. So back up in the data tab, we're gonna go to subtotals here and that's gonna open up this menu. And here we're going to add our subtotals at each change in our category field. So here you can select which field you wanna add subtotals for. And that's why we had to sort our category as we need our category items to be grouped together so that we can put a subtotal in between them at each section. Next, we're gonna choose the function that we wanna to use to aggregate our numerical fields here. And so you can only pick one, so you can pick from sum, count, average, max, min, and product. Here we're gonna sum our various values. And then you can choose which fields to sum. And here we're just gonna select our quantity and amount field. And we can press OK. And that's gonna add in our subtotal rows. So here you can see we've got a subtotal for clothing, electronics, and home, as well as a grand total. And then for each of those, we've got a subtotal formula that's been added that just references the items above. And in this case, the subtotal function is performing a sum. And then on the left-hand side here, we've got toggles that allow us to expand and collapse our grouped categories. So we can collapse them or expand them to show visually our different groups. The next method we're gonna take a look at for grouping our data is using pivot tables. So pivot tables have also been around Excel for a long time. And this would have been my go-to method before some of the newer methods for grouping that we'll see coming up. So let's take a look at pivot tables. So here we're gonna to go to the insert tab and create a pivot table based on our data set here. So that's gonna select our range for us. And here we're gonna place this pivot table in our existing worksheet and press okay. And that's gonna give us a blank pivot table with our pivot table fields list here. And that's gonna allow us to group any number of fields. So we can add the category or the subcategory field into our rows area. And that's gonna give us a grouping based on those two fields. And then we can also add any fields that we want to aggregate into our values area here. So let's try adding the quantity field and the amount field. And those are gonna to default to a sum of quantity and a sum of amount, but we can change those. So for example, if we want to change the sum of amount to an average of amount, we could just left click on that field in the pivot table fields menu, go to value field settings and change that here to an average, press okay. And now we've got sum of quantity and average of amount. Now here our grouped fields are listed all in one column. We can also change that in our pivot table analyze tab, sorry, the design tab here under report layout, we can go to show this in tabular form instead, and that way each field is displayed in its own separate column. 
we can add a few more changes to this so we can repeat all label items. And we can remove our subtotals if we want. So here we can select do not show subtotals. Or we can show them at the bottom of the group. And there we go, we've got our data set grouped by category and subcategory and displaying a sum of quantity and average of amount. The next grouping method we're going to take a look at is with Power Query. So in order to use Power Query, it's going to be best if we place this data set inside of a table first. So we're going to select a cell in there and go to the Insert tab and create a table. So that's going to select all of our data. And in this case, our table does have headers. So we're going to leave that checked, press OK. And now we've got an Excel table. We can go up to the Design tab here and rename this and press Enter to name that. And now we're ready to use Power Query with our table. So let's go to the Data tab and here we're going to select to get our data from table slash range. That's going to open up Power Query Editor. And here we can apply various transformations to our data set. So in the Transform tab, we've got various data transformation options, including a group by option. Let's click on that. And that's going to open up this menu. Here we've got two options, Basic and Advanced. Basic just allows us to group by one field and display one aggregation. So we're always going to select Advanced. And that's going to allow us to group by multiple fields and show multiple aggregations. So here we're going to group by our category field, and we're going to add another field for our subcategory field. And here we're going to do a sum of quantity. So that's just going to name our new field. And the operation is going to be a sum. On our quantity field, let's add a second aggregation here. We can do an average of the amount. That'll be the name for our new field. And we can take the average of our amount field, press OK, and there we've got our grouped data set now. Now that it's been grouped, we can go to the Home tab, close and load this back into Excel. So we're going to create a table, and we can create the table in an existing worksheet right next to our original data source here. Press OK. And there we've got our grouped data set. Next up, we're going to take a look at the group by function. So this is one of the newer methods for grouping data. And it's essentially like a function version of a pivot table. So let's check this out here. We're going to use group by. And the first argument is the fields that we want to group. And so in this case, we want to group our category and subcategory fields, and they are next to each other. So we can just reference them as a single range. But with group by, if you have non-adjacent fields that you want to group, you can use the hstack function. So we're just going to use that instead. And that allows us to reference our category and subcategory fields separately in case they are not adjacent. And the next argument are the values that you want to aggregate. So in this case, it's quantity and amount, and they're next to each other, so we could reference them as a single range. Again, we can just use hstack if they're not. And then the next argument is the function that we want to apply to aggregate. So here we can just reference a sum. And if we press enter, then we get our grouped data by category and subcategory. And we've got a sum of quantity and a sum of amount. Now we can aggregate this with different methods. So instead of just a sum, we can also use hstack here to sum our quantity, 
but take the average of our amount column. And if we press enter, there we go, we've got our grouped data by category, subcategory, and we're displaying the sum of quantity and the average of the amount. Lastly, we're gonna take a look at another new method for grouping our data, and that's gonna be using Python in Excel. So Python in Excel can do a lot of things, but one of them is gonna be that it allows you to group data. So first up, we're gonna define a data frame, which is just the object that Python is going to be able to use. And so to do that, we're going to type equals py, that's the Python function, and press tab, and that's gonna get us into Python mode. And now we can write some Python code. And we're gonna define our data frame, df, equals to, and we're just gonna select our data here. And Excel is gonna create the code for us. So it's gonna use this XL function with our range reference and headers is gonna be set to true. Now, if you just press enter, that's gonna create a new line in Python mode. So as you can see here, it says that we need to use control enter to commit our Python code. So control enter, and now we've got a data frame. So this is a Python object, but we can spill this into the grid if we want just to see what's in there. And that's just our original data set. Let's turn that back into the Python object to get it out of the way. And now we're gonna use that in another Python formula to group our data. So equals py and tab, and that's gonna get us into Python mode again. And here we're gonna take our data frame and apply the group by method. Let's just get this out of the way. And you can see IntelliSense shows group by And one of the arguments in group by is gonna be which columns you wanna group by. And so for this, we're gonna create a list of the columns and our list is gonna go into square brackets. And then in quotes, we're gonna have our category and we need to make sure that's spelled correctly and has the exact case of our column name. And we're gonna do the same thing with subcategory. And so that's gonna group our data by category and subcategory, but we need to apply an aggregation method. So here we're gonna sum our data. And if we press control enter, we get our data frame. Let's see what's in there. Convert that to Excel values. And you can see that we've got our category and subcategory fields here. And then we're summing up all our, our other fields, even this item column. So you can see that we just got concatenated values in there. Now, if we want, we can just select certain columns. And to do that, we're gonna use square braces here. And then inside those square braces, we're gonna have another list of the columns that we want. And let's press control enter. And now we've just got our grouped columns and the sum of quantity and the sum of amount field. And here we've got our category and subcategory and quantity and amount labels on different rows. We can fix that in our group by if we use this option here as index equals false. So right now these category and subcategory fields are being displayed on a separate row because they're index columns. But if we tell Python that they're not index columns with this option here and press control enter, then we'll get everything on the same row. Now, what happens if you want to sum the quantity field and maybe average the amount field? Well, here, we're not gonna be able to use this sum method. Instead, what we need to do is use the 
aggregation method. And in this, we're going to use a set of key value pairs. So we're going to have the key is the column name and the value is going to be the type of aggregation. So here we're going to take the quantity column and sum it. And here we're going to take the amount column and return the mean or average. And those key value pairs are going to go inside curly braces. And let's close off our aggregate function or method and press control enter. And there we go. We've got our grouped data by category and subcategory. And here we're going to sum the quantity field and get the average of the amount field. So there you have it. Those are five ways that you can group data sets in Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. And we'll see you in the next video.